Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, oh, welcome to Bhakti Sangha Japa Conference Call. Today we are very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami Maharaj. So Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shri Prabhupada, all glory to Guru Maharaj. So thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving your valuable association and time. So now I would like to hand over the call to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Hare can you uh, post the verse up on the screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, so okay. Swalokam na viduste vai Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya Om namo bhagavate vasudevaya from Lokam na Vidus Tevai Yatra Devo Janardanaha Ahur Drumra Dio Vedam Sakamakam Atad Vida. Translation Those who are less intelligent accept the Vedic ritualistic ceremonies as all in all. They do not know that the purpose of the Vedas is to understand one's own home where the Supreme Personality of Godhead lives. Not being interested in their real home, they are illusion and search after other homes. Srila Prabhupada's purport. This is from uh, Fourth Canto, 29th chapter, verse number 48. This is a uh, continuation, the explanation by um, Narada Muni to King uh, King Barchia Moses Barhi Shabbat. Anyway, generally, people are not aware of their interest in life to return home back to Godhead. People do not know about their real home in the spiritual world. So, this is a problem. Um, the living entity in this material world is very much uh, attached to making this material world their permanent settlement. Although they know they can't stay here, still, they, they push that out of their mind and work very hard in order to make something. They work so hard to find some permanent settlement here. They don't know that there's another place where they actually belong. Where, they're, where they can fulfill all their desires completely and perfectly. And that is their uh, eternal home in the spiritual world, in loving service with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Because they don't know that, <laughs> they work very hard in this world. Prabhupada goes on, in the spiritual world, there are many Vaikuntha planets, and in the topmost is Krishna Loka, Goloka Vrindavan. Despite the so called advancement of civilization, so called, he says, advancement in civilization is so called, it's not really advancement, it's just called advancement. Why? Because people are lost. Advancement in civilization means to understand one's relationship with the Supreme Lord, Atato Brahma Jigyasa, and work to fulfill that goal. So advancement in civilization is not more cars, more computers, better houses, better ways to dress, um, so many amenities that decorate the society in so many different ways. This is not advancement. Advancement is advancement in, in knowledge, in character and in uh, spiritual values. So Prabhupada calls so-called advancement. There is no information of Vaikuntha Lokas, the spiritual planets. At the present moment, so-called advanced civilized men, again, 
so-called advanced civilized men, using the word so-called, he gives them some credit by saying, yes, that's what they're called, but actually we don't want, we believe there's something else. Men are trying to go to other planets, but they do not know that even if they go to the highest planet, Ramaloka, they have to come back again to this planet as confirmed in the Gita. Abrahma Bhuvana Loka Purna Avritir Arjuna Mamupeti Tukompeya Purna Janmana Vidyate. From the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery, everywhere in repeated birth and death take place. But one who attains my abode, Krishna is speaking, he's addressing Arjun, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. So this is real knowledge. Now, people will, might take issue with that, that, you know, uh, this world is simply misery. Well, there is some happiness. Well, what is that happiness? The happiness that goes on in this material world is uh, uh, a relief from the suffering. In other words, if someone is apparently not suffering from the, the threefold miseries, adiatmika, adibautika, adigaivika, miseries of the body and the mind, miseries of caused by other living beings, that's always there. And miseries caused by higher powers, which is very much prominent in today's present sense, uh, world. Uh, so one is thinking I'm happy. But actually this is so temporary that within a second things change. So no one can actually, so this place is called a place of misery, Dukalyam Ashashvatam. And you can't stay here either, even if you want to stay here. It's, uh, why is it misery? Because there's a repeated birth and death. <laughs> um, it's not, it, the, the, the scriptures say, for the living entity, there is no such thing as birth, and there's no such thing as death. The hanyate hanyamane sadire that the body goes through changes and it begins, stays for some time, produces some byproducts, uh, gradually dwindles and then vanishes. And then after that, so when it begins, we call it birth and when it dies, we call it death. But these are considered to be miseries, especially if no one likes to leave the body. Everyone wants to live for everyone, ever. Death is the greatest fear. Everyone is afraid of death, and everyone makes so many precautions, arrangements to somehow protect themselves from death. Why? Because we want to live forever because we are eternal. We do live forever, but we can't live forever in this particular body. Therefore, we uh, are uh, trying to somehow or other come up with ideas and so we can prolong some, some happiness in this world. But it's not possible. It's not hot, possible to, to find anything permanent in this world. That's why it's called Ashashvatam, it is temporary. And Prabhupada goes on, if one goes to the highest planetary system within the universe, he still has to return after the effects of pious activities are finished. Space vehicles may go very high in the sky, but as soon as their fuel is finished, they have to return to the earthly planets. All these activities are performed in illusion. In other words, there's no benefit. When you do something and there's no real benefit from it, that is called illusion activities should produce some kind of positive results, but they, they just go, they appear to go to some higher planet, but of course Prabhupada said they never went anyway, because it's just some a way to extract money from the local populace and then so they can go on with their plans of trying to explore the universe, but they can't go to these, you can, you can actually go to higher planets, but not through these mechanical means. You can only go there through, through uh, accumulating a certain type of karma. So when you accumulate a certain kind of karma, that karma propels you 
in a certain area where you take birth, and it could be anywhere within the universe, but not by space, space vehicles. The real attempt, Prabhupada goes on to say, should be now to return home back to Godhead. The process is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, Yanti Mam Yaji No Pimam. Those who are engaged in devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead return back home, back to Godhead. So the word is return home. It's not like we're going there for the first time. We're going back to where we belong, actually. Uh, our, this material planet, this, or anywhere in this material world is not our home because we are not this body. So whatever body you may inhabit, forces you to be located somewhere within the material universes. But we are not the body. And therefore, because we have a body, we wind up in some place within the universe in a particular type of body, trying to find some kind of satisfaction in that body in relationship to this, the atmosphere that we're put into. But actually, we are pure spiritual energy and therefore the soul cannot exist in this material world only it can only live in the material world in the material body so as soon as we relinquish the material body and relinquish the karma that produces another material body then we are back in our pure spiritual nature eternal full of knowledge and full of joy and that is, the, that is the atmosphere of the spiritual world. It is our nature. It is the atmosphere of the spiritual world. So Prabhupada says, we return home back to Godhead. <clears throat> now Prabhupada makes another interesting point. Human life is very valuable. And one should not waste it in vain explorations of other planets. One should be intelligent enough to return to the to Godhead. One should be interested in information about the spiritual Vaikuntha planets, and in particular, the planet known as Goloka Vrindavan. We should learn the art of going there by the simple method of devotional service, beginning with hearing and chanting, hearing Sravanam Kirtanam Vishnu. This is also confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam Kalir Dosha Nidhi Rajan Astiyaka Mahagunaha Kirtana Deva Krishna Sya Mukta Sangha Param Vajat. This verse <coughs> is spoken by Sukadeva Goswami to Maharaj Parikshit. Kalir, uh, Kali Yuga, Dosha Nidhi. Dosha means false and Nidhi means ocean. Rajan, he's addressing King Parikshit, O King. Kalair Dosha Nidhi Raja. O King, Kali Yuga is an ocean of false. Asti Echo, Mahagun. And there is one benediction. What is that benediction? Kirtana Eva Krishna. Yeah, it's not a, just a Gun, it's a Mahagun. That means it's a great benediction. What is that? Kirtana Eva Krishna. Yeah. Yeah. Krishna Kirtan, or glorifying Krishna by chanting his holy name. Mukta Sangam Param Vajat. One can uh, enter into the kingdom of God and uh, become completely purified. So the last line here, Prabhupada paraphrases it. One can go to the Supreme Planet simply by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. Why is it so hard for us to understand this? Why don't we spend more time chanting the Hare Krishna Maha mantra? Why do we think we have to do so many other things and we push the mantras aside? We do our 16 rounds at the most, maybe a few extra. But this is not Krishna consciousness. Krishna consciousness means to chant as much as possible. All day, if you can chant all day, you will see what the difference is when you start to really chant more and more aside from your prescribed uh, required japa. And you'll start to enter into a consciousness where you'll start to feel really happy and satisfied. And those things that bother you won't bother you anymore. 
<laughs> those things that are uh, seem to be important, you will start to see, well, really they're not that important. And then you will start to want to appreciate the association of devotees even more and more. And you will just find Krishna consciousness so wonderful because everything is there in the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So, and as it says here, it's the ticket back home, back to Godhead. And Prabhupada wants to make this point. And so in the last sentence, he uses six words. There is no doubt about this. <laughs> when a pure devotee, a uh, Mahabhagavat spiritual master comes to teach and he says, there's no doubt about this. You can understand that there is no doubt about this. <laughs> So it's up to us to take this seriously and chant more and more and purify ourselves and not be so much interested in uh, improving our material situation. You can see, you can, you can spend years impro improving your material situation and in one second, maybe even, yeah, within one second, all of that work could be destroyed in a second. Just in a minute. Uh, the material energy is just like that. It just can take everything away in a second. There's a little parable that's mentioned in one uh, one Shastra. I don't remember the name of the Shastra, but it says, I worked so hard and I built a house so I could be happy. And then the house burnt down. <laughs> so, that's the whole thing. So yeah, you never... So you don't know, material energy is just like that. We're struggling so hard to try to accumulate so many material things. But that energy is being wasted. <laughs> Where the real, the real value is, is in chanting the holy names of the Lord and engaging in pure devotional service like that. And not getting enamored by the ritualistic uh, the statements in the Vedas, and Krishna says that in the Bhagavad Gita, one who becomes enamored by the uh, the flowery words of the Vedas, he uses the word flowery, because the Vedas, you know, especially the Sama Veda, the Atharva Veda, um, you know, well, Sama Veda mostly, and oh, all the Vedas, they use very nice language to describe the ritualistic performances that what can elevate themselves from one material position to a better material position. But then again, Prabhupada wants to make this point clear. That's why he says, ah, Brahmana, Bhuvana, Loka, Purna, Ritter, Arjuna. You know, you can go, you can go anywhere in this material world, but you can't stay. And even while you're there, who knows what will happen? There's always calamities. Even in the heavenly planets, there's calamities. I was just reading how um, in the eighth canto in the fifth chapter, how the demigods were attacked by the demons and the attack was so few, fierce that many of the demigods lost their lives. And even though they have uh, the elixir of immortality that they can revive the dead in some cases, but these in these cases, these demigods were lost. So even in the heavenly planets, there's there's sudden calamities that can come by way of attacks from the demoniac forces. There's many demoniac planets that surround the earth. And sometimes we wonder why there are so much uh, crazy things going on in the earth because a lot of times these demoniac planets that surround the earth, so some of the beings, they actually come to earth and uh, exploit the people here. It's actually a fact. Uh, this is also described in Shadow and Substance by uh, one book written by uh, Suhotra Maharaj. He describes these invisible planets that are surrounding the, the area of the earth. Some of them are higher planets and some of them are lower planets. So we don't even know the names of some of these planets. So yeah, this material energy is simply meant for conflict. <laughs> so therefore, it says that one should use time, energy, 
resources, abilities, intelligence, words, uh, towards the goal of life. Sometimes you know, when we're young, we still have so many ideas on how do we get settled and get become stable, established in this world and have nice family and have nice relationships. And we think, well, you know, when I get old, then Krishna consciousness will make more sense. <laughs> but um, Prahlad Maharaj destroys that whole argument by explaining that old simply means just before you die. And uh, <clears throat> death is not assured. You know, as Prabhupada would always say, Maharaj Pariksit had seven days. We don't, he says, we don't even know if we have seven minutes. And sudden deaths happen all the time. In fact, the young, um, people are coming in and out of the material world fast and the other material bodies very fast. Every day, thousands of living entities come in. Every day, thousands of living entities leave the material world. So birth and death is happening so rapidly that it's un even uncountable. Well, on this planet, we can count it, but what to speak about the entire universe. So this is the nature of this world. All right, we want to be happy. We want to establish something. We want to have a nice arrangement for our family. We want our kids to grow up and get everything nice in their life. And we want to get, get them a good education. And when we want to make sure they're established nicely so they don't have to, you know, struggle unnecessarily. Now that, that energy can be used then, but unless we take sufficient time to guide our children and, of course, um, use the time ourselves to become fully Krishna conscious. If we find that we, have, we don't have enough time for Krishna, what is enough time for Krishna? when we can feel completely satisfied in the execution of our devotional service. If we're not feeling the satisfaction in our devotional service, then, then we should achieve, we should look what is missing that will bring that satisfaction. And generally, it's usually that we need to chant more rounds or we need to spend more time in developing quality rounds, spending time with devotees, reading Srimad Bhagavatam, this, this class you're having every day, I believe it's every day, of course I'm here every Friday, is a wonderful way to bring people into Srimad Bhagavatam for a, uh, 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 a, a discussion on, on the most important thing in life. And that is our future. Where are we going to go? Everyone is concerned about their future. Everyone makes plans about the future, but... What about the real future when we leave this body? That's the most important plan making because that plan making will make a big decision on, on whether you go, whether you, you're in a better situation next life or in something, uh, I would say lower. So um, this verse is full of nice, and Prabhupada's purport, of course, is full of really strong, the Prabhupada ends it very clearly, chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> and it's, it's, uh, it almost sounds so simplistic. Is that all I really have to do? Well, that's all you have to, that's what you have to do as the most important thing. You can do other things, but that, that has to be the most important thing, the chanting of the whole. You will never, never be overwhelmed by the material energy if you take shelter of Krishna's name regularly and chant as much as possible. Chant kirtan, chant japa, have bhajan programs, whatever way you can, make the holy name in your worship of deity. Now Krishna has come in this age in the form of his name, he's come in the form of his deity, he's come in the form of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Bhagavad Purana is actually an incarnation of the Lord. It says that in the third chapter of the first canto, that this Bhagavatam is actually you know, arose after the disappearance of Krishna from the planet to give light in this dark age of Kali. And what is Bhagavad saying? 
the last verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam is, you know, um, put up the, anybody, can you have the Bhagavatam ready? Put up the last verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the 12th canto, 13th chapter, I think it's verse number 23. It's the last verse in the whole Bhagavatam. Can you find that? 12, 13, 23. It's interesting. You'll see how Bhagavatam ends. And, you know, when you want to make a point and you want to sum uh, summarize everything you said before then, you make that your conclusion of your presentation. I'm very sorry, Maharaj. Uh, Veda base is currently down. I can't hear you. Uh, I'm sorry, Maharaj. Veda base is down. Oh. Yeah. I, the, Veda the Veda base is down. Yes, the server is down. I'm getting an error. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, well, if it comes back, De for what it, yeah, for whatever reason. Um, Let's see, twelfth canto, thirteenth chapter, verse twenty-three. Twelfth canto, thirteenth chapter, verse number twenty-three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mataji, you can screen from Prabhupada books, Mataji. Um, it will work today. Okay. Does not have 12, 11th and 12th chapter. 13th chapter. Oh, sorry, sorry. 12th chapter to the 12th canto. Still looking? Would Vani books work? Hmm? Say that again. I was just telling Mataji if Vani quotes works because Veda Bis was down. Okay. Um, if I put it up on my screen, can you... Uh, Transfer it. Will that work? If we do share screen? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so let me see what do I need to do here. Uh, <laughs> share screen. Okay, so. Well, I, let's see, how do I get to the Bhagavad, to my Veda base from here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm, okay, okay, we're getting closer now, okay. Okay, so can you see my screen now? Yes, yeah. Yes, my Okay. Contents. Shrima Bhagavatam. Canto. Twelve Canto. Thirteenth chapter. And verse 23, translation. <clears throat> Last verse, I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Lord Hari, the congregational chanting of whose holy name destroys all sinful reactions, 
and the offering of obeisances unto whom relieves all material sufferings. Mm -hmm. So it glorifies the Lord by saying the chanting of his holy name destroys all sinful reactions and one who offers obeisances to Krishna all relieves all material sufferings. So this was finished on July 18th, 1982 by the Srila Prabhupada. So in the last verse, it mentions the glorification of chanting of the holy names of the Lord. <laughs> so that means it's very significant when such a glory of such a pure scripture emphasizes throughout and at the end the congregational chanting of Krishna's holy name. Okay, we can go back to regular screen. So, uh, yeah, so this verse, <laughs> as Prabhupada says, of this there is no doubt. Um, the, we all know this, whatever I'm saying is something that is uh, quite relevant to everybody's life, but still, we don't chant enough, and we don't take enough time to glorify the name and put the name first, just like now we are in the month of Purushottam, and it's recommended that we increase our bhakti by reading Bhagavatam, reading Gita, especially the 15th chapter, and by increased amounts of japa like that. So um, we want to develop that taste, and that taste is available. The taste, a lot of the time, the taste simply comes by, uh, by increasing quantity. Just chant, chant, chant. Prabhupada says that also. Just keep chanting, 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 and the taste will come. Once the taste will come, then you will want to keep chanting and chanting and chanting. <laughs> and once, when you're connected to the holy name, you are on, you're purely on the spiritual platform. Material energy cannot touch you. Nothing can happen to you. You are completely protected. You are completely, what we say, elevated simply by the holy name. That's Lord Chaitanya's special gift in this age of Kali. Lord Chaitanya is so eager to bring his mercy in this age that he's making it. Not only is he so eager that to elevate the souls in this age, he's come personally to deliver the means to do it. And he's, he's demonstrated, he's delivering it personally, and he's made it easy through the congregational glorification of chanting the holy names of the Lord. And as soon as one chants the holy names of the Lord, the whole atmosphere all around, as, Ch as Lord Chaitanya speaks, the glorifications of the holy name in the first verse of Shikshastaka. He ends Sarvatma Snaparam Param Vijayate Si Krishna Sankirtanam. Sarvatma. Sarvatma Snaparam. Snaparam means bath. And Sarvatma in this case means complete. It's a complete bath. That means the Acharyas give the explanation of the statement by saying that everything becomes purified, your home, your possessions, your body, everything becomes purified through chanting the holy names of the Lord. One doesn't have to do all other kinds of forms of ritualistic performances in order to obtain purification. But it takes faith and it takes uh, determination okay so these are some things we can think about in relationship to this wonderful verse um, but see the discouragements there that is being presented to us it's very common that people want to improve their material position 
And this is this happens everywhere in the world, even with devotees, a lot of emphasis on improving material conditions. Some emphasis can be applied in certain circumstances when the need is there. But if we get too much into that and forget about where, where, where improvement needs to be applied, and that is we need to purify our consciousness to a point where everything that we come in contact with in terms of our activities in devotional service becomes an, an opportunity to uh, show our love for Krishna. In other words, we become uh, connected to Krishna in everything we do, whether we maintain our families, whether we take care of our material responsibilities by earning a livelihood, or whether we go to school and get an education. When our consciousness is on the spiritual platform, all these things, all these other activities also become bhakti, or an expressions of our devotion to Krishna. We don't have to worry about everything. That's why Prabhupada said, Krishna consciousness is so simple. He said, it's so simple, you'll miss it. In other words, it's, he's saying it's so, it's so obvious that if you're not simple, you have a tendency to complicate it. And if you complicate it, then you can, then it becomes hard to understand. There's another nice verse, um, which I can bring up this is a nice discussion between Narada Muni and Dhruva Maharaj. Narada Muni is preaching to Dhruva Maharaj about uh, practicing forgiveness towards his stepmother who uh, offended him. Of course, Dhruva left, left the palace, left his family, left everything, went to the forest to perform great austerities in order to show revenge against his father, his stepmother, and his uh, stepbrother. He wanted to get a kingdom better than his father and his grand grandfather, even his great-grandfather, who was Lord Brahma himself. Uh, when Narada was preaching to him, uh, tell him, you know, you know, you, you're just a young boy now, you know, go home, live out your childhood. When you get older, you can do all this Krishna conscious stuff. Uh, Dhruva got a little upset at Narada and said, you know, you know, if you come to give me some advice, if you really want to help me, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a Brahmin. <laughs> I'm not a Brahmin. I'm a Kshatriya. <laughs> So don't ask me to, to get into this thing about forgiveness. I'm a shatri. <laughs> like this. This is from the uh, fourth canto, the uh, eighth chapter. This is with the discussion. Yeah, let's go to the yeah. The, yeah, go to the uh, go to the thirtieth verse. I think it's verse number thirty. Yeah, yeah, I think here. Here, here he goes. Uh, the process of this, now you have decided to undertake the mystic project under the instructions of just heard to achieve the mercy of God. But in my opinion, such austerities are not possible for an ordinary, very difficult to satisfy the Supreme Personnel. Prabhupada's purport is interesting. The process of bhakti yoga is simultaneously very difficult and very easy to perform. Okay, so there's a contradiction there. Very difficult and very easy to perform. Sri Narada Muni, the Supreme Spiritual Master, is testing Dhruva Maharaj to see how determined he is to prosecute devotional service. This is the process of accepting a disciple. The sage Narada has come to Dhruva under the direction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead just to initiate him. Yet he is testing Dhruva's determination 
to execute the process. So then Prabhupada sums up and gives the answer. It is a fact, however, that for a sincere person, devotional service is very easy. For one who is not determined and sincere, this process is very difficult. <laughs> so there's the there's how is that apparent dichotomy is uh, answered. For one who is determined and sincere, it's easy. For one who is not, it's very difficult. Sincerity means, <clears throat> what is sincerity means? Uh, means that I'll do whatever it takes to become Krishna conscious. And determination means that whatever, whatever is presented in front of me, whether it's difficulties or things that are easy, it doesn't matter. There's that beautiful verse in the uh, Bhagavad Gita, in the uh, second chapter, in verse number 41. You want to turn to that one. This is a very instructive verse, 241 in Bhagavad Gita. Vyayasma vavyasatvika buddhir ekeha kudanandana bahu sakya yanatas cha buddhayo vyavasahinam. 241. Okay. Yeah. Those who are on this path are resolute in purpose, and their aim is one, O beloved child of the Kuru, so Krishna is speaking to Arjun. The intelligence of those who are irresolute is many branch. And Prabhupada, a strong faith in Krishna consciousness is that one should be elevated to the highest perfection. Faith means unflinching trust in something sublime. So Prabhupada gives the, um, the commentary by um, Vishwanath Chakrapati Thakur on this verse, which is not mentioned in the purport, but he speaks about that in others. Maybe he, he does, might indicate it here. And what he does is he sums it up, Vishwanath Chakrapati Thakur, statement is summed up by saying uh, this verse means whether it's easy or whether it's difficult this is not a consideration if something is easy well we like that and of course that's that's good but if something is difficult but still it's required we're not discouraged in fact Devotees find great pleasure in taking on difficulties in order to make advancement in Krishna consciousness and to also uh, preach to the conditioned souls. So Prabhupada, using this verse and Vishwanath Chakravarti's commentary on this verse, he said, um, this was my success in Krishna consciousness. I never considered... Um, anything, whether it was difficult or, or not, it was the instructions of my spiritual master, that's all I cared. <laughs> and Prabhupada meditated on this particular verse as a means to execute his devotional service, uh, focused on the one goal to preach Krishna consciousness despite whatever obstacles or difficulties or reverses that may come. So um, this is, is a requirement because this is the way this material world is. The material world will a lot, a lot of times work against you in your execution of Krishna consciousness. And you can expect that. That's just the way the world is. Maya will come to test you, to distract you, to deter you, to delay you to give you many reasons why you shouldn't be serious about your Krishna consciousness. But this is the way the world is. 
But therefore, when we take shelter of the words of the spiritual master and the words of Krishna coming through the Shastras, then we get a clear vision of how, how to execute our devotional life despite whatever's happening. And again, coming back to the ascent, that weapon that we use to fight Maya with is chanting the holy names of the Lord. In fact, Maya doesn't even fight when we chant the holy name. She offers his obeisances as soon as she sees a devotee seriously chanting the holy names of the Lord. Like that. Okay, so let's open it up for questions if there are any. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much Maharaj for uh, the nectar. Thank you so much for uh, the beautiful descriptions and uh, for the beautiful instructions. So thank you so much Maharaj. So I would request devotees now if they have any questions or they want to share their realizations so they can ask now. Mm. Hare Krishna Maharaj Kambat Pranam. Hare Maharaj. Is this yes, Ram Tirta? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj. This is Praveen Govindas from Charlotte. Uh, Praveen, okay. Hare Krishna. Kambat Pranam Maharaj. Uh, thank you for the wonderful class. So Maharaj, there was one question asked to me uh, by one uh, devotee. Uh, he said that... Um, uh, why is ISKCON devotees always talking about the next next birth? Uh, it isn't, uh, they are presenting the whole scenario as to be very pessimistic and not looking at this world. While there are uh, pure devotees who, who would like to even take birth in uh, hellish planets to serve uh, Krishna. But uh, you give a very pessimistic view of the whole scenario here. So how do we answer that question? Uh, his question is, why don't we focus on what's going on now instead of looking towards the next life? Yes, because we always say material world is uh, full of miseries and, you know, we have to uh, plan for the next life. So he said that is a very pessimistic view that you have here. Well, we're living Krishna consciousness now and planning for the future means, means living in the present. You don't plan for the future without, by, without living in the present. Whatever you do in the present will, will bring you into that same future according to the quality of activities in the present. So, but the thing is, everyone, even in this world, in the materialist, everyone is planning for their future. You know, the, the man growing up, he's thinking about who is he going to marry? He's going to school, trying to get an education and a job. Uh, you know, everyone, people are going to school, planning for the future. Everyone plans for the future. You have to live in the present. He might be mistaken and think we don't, we're not living in the present. We live in the pleasant the present, but we plan for the future. But we don't dream about the future. Bhakti Vinod Thakur gives this scenario. He says, forget the past that sleeps. Near the future, dream at all. Act in times that are with thee. In progress ye shall call. But our, we want to keep our sights on where we're going at the same time we're focusing on the present. You can't, we're not planning for the future but without understanding the need of the present. It's not possible. It's not like making a materialistic plan. 
where I'm doing this now and then later on I'll do something different. What you do now is bringing about your future. Every moment you're moving in that direction because it's your consciousness that is being developed. So when you become, if you're, if you're becoming Krishna conscious now, then that Krishna, when you become fully Krishna conscious, you'll be back home, back to Godhead. So we're not pessimistic, we're realistic. <laughs> we have to live in the present, but it's not that we're neglecting the present by planning for the future. If you're doing that, then as Bhakti Vinoda courses, you're simply dreaming, that's all. No, there is only one time, the present. There's no such thing as future, there's no such thing as past, because everything happens now. Now is the most important time. But still, you want to know where, what direction to go in. That's the important thing. If you say, well, I'm going on a trip. Well, where are you going? I don't know, but I'll, I want to get there. So you have to plan. So we want to make our move to get out of this material world. So we plan to go back home, back to Godhead. But to actualize that plan, you have to live in the present. You have to chant Hare Krishna now. You have to serve now. You have to develop your consciousness now. You have to you know, worship the Lord now. It's not like, well, we're not doing any of the things now. We're, we're, going, we're going to do all these things in the future. No, it'll never happen. What you do now, you're, you're setting the stage for the future. That's all. It's, it's just like Prabhupada says, you know, if you take a uh, you take a devotee and you put him on the hellish planet, what is he going to do? Chant Hare Krishna. You take him and put him on earth planet, he's going to chant Hare Krishna. You take him and put him in the heavenly planets, he's going to chant Hare Krishna. He's a devotee. So wherever he is, he's going to chant. So that's, that's our life is Krishna consciousness. And our goal is to ultimately go back home, back to Godhead. But that we don't, we're not neglecting anything about the present reality because it doesn't work. You have to live in the present. So he's partially right, except that he's, his, uh, his, uh, his, his misunderstanding of the devotees, he just misunderstands the devotees. And we're not pessimistic about the, we're, this material world. Yeah, what he's saying is that you should try to enjoy this material world. That's what basically he's saying. Why be pessimistic? Why live about something that's, why don't, why don't you just enjoy this material world now and don't worry about the future? That's what he's saying. <laughs> so he's a gross materialist, that's all. He's just thinking about material happiness. He doesn't know that this, this, that whatever he, this, whatever he's achieved in this world, will be finished in time. Time is that element that catches up with everyone and takes everything away. Devotees want to want to live in that in that in that realm beyond time, where time cannot destroy whatever we, whatever we achieve. He's living in the, he's living in an illusion. His whole idea is that you should enjoy this material world. Now, why be so pessimistic? You know, eat, drink, be merry, and enjoy now, because when you die, don't worry about that. That'll happen anyway. So he's, he doesn't have any spiritual, what we say, uh, uh, value to his question. It's all about enjoying the material world. That's all it is. But devotees are enjoying Krishna consciousness. They're not, he can't, because he's not a devotee, he can't understand that what the devotees are feeling when they're executing devotional service in this material world. We're pessimistic, not pessimistic, we're realistic about this world because we, Krishna says, hey, 
Kukalayam, Kushashratam. It's miserable, it's temporary. You can't stay here, you can't enjoy here. But he doesn't like that because it, it just interferes with his whole way of thinking because he wants to enjoy this world. So he may have some material assets and he's thinking he's enjoying, but he doesn't really know that time will catch up and whatever he has, even now, it's probably causing him some suffering. Anyway, everybody's suffering in this material world. If I, if, I, if I say, well, in the future, you can get a body that doesn't die, that doesn't go old, that's full of knowledge, it's full of joy, it's eternal. And uh, you say, well, uh, well, well, why should I plan for that? I'm happy in my rotten body now, which is full of misery. I can die in any moment of coronavirus, you know, <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have that person is completely in illusion he, he doesn't know what devotional service is he doesn't know the minds of the devotees and he's 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 actually he's actually making wrong statements in relationship to how devotees think thank you Maharaj Tell him that. <laughs> sure. How do you both? No, 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 no. Tell him I said it if you don't want to take credit for it. <laughs> <laughs> sure, Maharaj. Anyone else? Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandar Pranam. Uh, Maharaj, I just have one question. Uh, you were mentioning about uh, um, substance and shadow. I was just wondering uh, what it is about Maharaj. I was not clear on that. Oh, this is a book. It's the name of a book called uh, Shadow and Substance. It was written by my uh, god brother. Uh, Suhotra Maharaj, who left the world in 2000, I think, 2006, I think he took part in. But he was a great scholar, and he did a lot of study, parallel studies. He, he was really quite intelligent in investigating a lot of the cosmical uh, statements throughout the Vedas. So he wrote this interesting book called Shadow and Substance. It talks about planets that surround the earth that you can't see, they're invisible. That are, that are uh, inhabited by different types of beings depending where it is in relationship to the earth. Some of them are higher beings, some of them are lower beings like that. So that's just part of, small part of the book. It's an interesting book. You can get it, it's by Suhotra Maharaj. It's probably available through, through some of the avenues that we have. It's called Shadow and Substance. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, I, 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 I do think I have a copy of that, but, um, but I didn't get to reading that. And uh, that's why I was wondering what it is about, like um, what what is meant by the shadow and the substance and that's why i asked you this question maharaj thank you so you have much. you you have the book yes maharaj i do have the book yeah you i have mean time. i've heard about sorry i heard about it also in some classes like about a couple of years back too by some devotees but i never really got to reading it so that's why i was uh, hoping to get some inspiration from you uh, that's why I asked this question, Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah, you might find parts of, you know, you, you, you could go through the book and pick out where you want to read if, if you're looking for certain things. In it. Or if you want, you can read the whole book. <laughs> Thanks, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Nemo.
Hare Krishna. If no one has any question or comment or realizations, so we can end here. Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, Dhanavat Pranams. Thank you so much for your wonderful association. Um, oh, Lali Tangi. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Um, thank you for your very valuable association. So Maharaj, my question is, um, so, uh, you know, in the Bhagavad Gita, we read that Krishna says that I take care, yoga, kshemam, vaham, yaham. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he promises that I, I relieve you from all the sinful reactions and do not fear. So, and, <clears throat> and uh, you know, with devotees, uh, we uh, know that, you know, Krishna is taking care. And when something happens, uh, that uh, that looks like you know things are out of control, or um, something uh, that uh, that we are in trouble um, in many different ways. So there is uh, an expectation from the heart that you, uh, Krishna will take care. Uh, but is that the, is that expectation also not a, a pure bhakti? And how to avoid that? also because when that comes in then when it is up, when we face up and down our bhakti is not uh, steady it also looks like going up and down he, krishna is just he's gonna whatever you gain in devotional service he's never lost he's, he said i i uh, preserve what you have and i carry what you lack so whatever is needed for you to become fully Krishna conscious, Krishna will provide that. And whatever situation you find yourself in, you never lose whatever you gain in devotional service. The devotional service is like money in the bank. Material life is whatever you accomplish and whatever you achieve and um, time changes it or eventually destroys it. But devotional service is on the spiritual platform, therefore it's under, not under the influence of time. Being free from the element of time, it continues on. So, so just like if you don't finish in this life, and then if you say you had 80% Krishna conscious, and then in your next life, you begin from 80%. So Krishna is always there to guide us and to uh, direct us, help us, uh, to remind us. But still, we have to do the work. It's not like, it's just like when he was instructing Arjuna on, in the battlefield, it was all about Krishna inspiring Arjuna to take up his duty and to fight with full you know, enthusiasm. And Krishna's with us, encouraging us to become more and more fixed in our execution of devotional service. But still, we have to do the work. <laughs> He gives the results, he provides the intelligence, he provides the facility, he provides the environment, he provides everything and gives the result. Our, our role is to make the endeavor. We have to show Krishna how sincere we are by our efforts. And then he responds. And he says, Yayatam Mam Pratpandyate, Tamstataiva Bajami Aham, Mama Vartmana Vartante, Manusya Parta Sarvashyaha. As you approach me, I reward you accordingly. And then he ends, everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Krita. So what he's saying, both within the material and the spiritual, in other words, every, everywhere. Uh, it's his path. He set up the material path. He set up the spiritual path. No one is outside of that. And according to how one connects to one of the paths, and in which way they connect to that path, 
he's going to reward them. In other words, they get the results of their endeavors. We can't make anything happen. All we can do is uh, strengthen our desire in a certain direction and act in that way, such as like, you know, say we want to um, improve our deity worship. So we have to use our intelligence and say, well, what else can I do to improve it? And then we think, oh, maybe I'll get a nicer altar. And then maybe uh, I'll, um, you know, I'll uh, spend more time doing the deity worship and uh, I'll learn more prayers. So we get the ideas and then we get the ways to carry out the ideas. But then the results come from Krishna. So he carries what we lack. And whatever we achieve, it's never lost. He's a big part of everything we do, especially for devotees. He's sitting in the heart of all living entity as Antriyami, super soul. So he's right there. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Uh, that is so uh, reassuring and wonderful to hear. Thank you so much. We hear uh, many instructions, but when we are in some situation and circumstances, and when the instruction comes, uh, that, then it makes a different meaning. Thank mm. you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. This is Gail. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, your answer sparked a question for me. Um, when, we talk, when we talk about the eternality of devotional service, mm -hmm. as you said, you know, every endeavor that we make goes to our spiritual bank account. But <laughs> I'm wondering what that means in terms of the actual physical act. Let's say we cook for Krishna. Um, that it's, devotional service, it seems to have a beginning and an end. So when we talk no, about... No, it's not so much the physical act itself. It's the, the, uh -huh. it's, it's the, it's the devotional mood. Mm -hmm. There's so many acts that you can perform, and all these things are ways to show our love for Krishna. But it's our devotion that is accounted. That's why Prabhupada said, try to become 100% Krishna conscious. If you're not, then if you become 70% Krishna conscious, that means if you've developed your consciousness to that level, where there's only 30% left, then you'll, you'll begin at that at 70% in your next life. So mm -hmm. it's it's the cultivation of our consciousness from material to spiritual. But that's that's a that's a, gr a gradual elevation going through the different layers of our material uh, what we say material coverings until we actually break break into the spiritual realm and then developing that higher consciousness within that. So if you're remembering Krishna 24 hours a day, then you're 100% Krishna conscious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's Thank not you, so Maharaj. the act itself. Oh. Okay. Ways to show our, the ways to bring our consciousness to Krishna. Yes, yes. It's all about consciousness. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, one, um, one other thing about your answer is um, when you were speaking about um, Krishna says in the Gita, everyone follows my path. So when he says that, is the correct understanding that, you know, whether you are a gross materialist or 
a transcendentalist, following my path means that um, Krishna gives the consequences of whatever endeavor you make for, you know, whether it's for your own selfish, purely selfish enjoyment, whether that endeavor is following the shastras or the karma, you know, not following the shastras at all, or yeah. if you're trying to attain Krishna, whatever your endeavors are, Krishna will give you the his consequences for those endeavors. So yeah, he his, said giving so. His uh, his giving his consequences, is that synonymous with when he says yeah. my path? He says, "Aham sarvasya prabhava matat sarva prabhartanta iti patva vadante vambuddha bhava samam vidaha." I am the source of all material and spiritual world. Everything comes from me. The wise who know this engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. So, material, spiritual, from Krishna, everything is spiritual. There's nothing outside of Krishna. So, one who works in any capacity, whether for their own personal selfish interests or whatever, the results are coming from the Supreme Lord, either directly or indirectly through the material energy. There's nothing outside of God. In other words, there's no third thing, no second thing. Everything is within the context of the Lord's energies. Mm -hmm. So he's going to give okay. the results. Just like, you know, you might meet a very uh, prestigious person and become friends with them. And that person will maybe reward you in their, in certain ways by the personal relationship you have. But another person might have a relationship with that person in a less direct way. And then that person might reward that person through, through another agency. But in the same way, it's all. Oh, wait, your last couple of words got lost in the... Yeah, in other fire. words, both material and spiritual activities are coming ultimately, the results are actually coming from Krishna. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But in, in that example you were trying to give just now of, um, you know, a person may have relationships with two different people and one person responds to them one way and the other person responds to them an, another way so i was missing the the you know the actual flow of the analogy there well the, the, the analogy is that um, it's that person who has relationships with both people who are who are giving the results Krishna through his agencies or Krishna directly, either one, he's giving the results. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. I can give you something, or I can give something to a person to give to you, but still it's coming. Uh huh. From you. Right, right. Okay, that, that definitely clears it up. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Okay, so we're in the material world, so we have to follow the clock, at least to some degree. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, and uh, everyone stay happy and healthy. Be careful, coronavirus is not gone. Gone. still around. <laughs> We're still getting it, and it's uh, becoming a problem. So keep yourself keep yourself healthy. Get a lot of fresh air. Take a lot of ginger. Take a lot of uh, vitamin C. Uh, get some exercise. Stay happy, and most important, uh, stay stay connected to Krishna. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for wonderful class. Adibo.
Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hey. Thank you, everyone, for joining. So we can end here. So Vancham Kalka Rubeshya Kripa Sindhu Evcha Patita Nam Pavne Pyo Vaishya Ve Pyo Namo Namha Anand Koti Vaishya Vandhi Ki Jai Shri La Prabhupada Ki Jai Shri Mahatma Ki Jai His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami Maharaj Ki Jai Jai